beastly brown and orange brown, armor brown, a red brown, and beige brown, a uh, beige brown. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Ash and Stone channel. My name is Chris and today I'll be showing you how I went about painting my Oathmark Orcs. But first a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. Starting from a black undercoat, I begin painting the skin with Vallejo Light Grey Green. I wanted to avoid the classic bright vibrant green for my Orcs and instead move towards a black grey, while keeping a subtle green tone there. Light grey green is an excellent start for this. It is a light, thin colour, so it will require a couple of coats to get fairly even coverage. I then grab some Vallejo and Natural Steel. Clearly I've had this paint for a while, and total surprise, I paint all of the areas that will be iron or steel. I want to create a dark forge blackened steel. I don't imagine orcs take too much time to grind and polish their armaments beyond sharpening an edge, and natural steel makes for a great dark metallic base. Other areas that will be painted bronze are left black for now. The secret to achieving the skin and steel tone I want is Army Painter Grim Black Speed Paint. This is slathered on over all of the areas we have just painted. The speed paint darkens and shades both base colours in a much more dramatic fashion than a simple black wash does, giving us an excellent dark base for the skin and a realistic forged black and steel for the metal areas. That will take a little while to dry, so while I wait, I paint the figure's trousers. I use Vallejo Field Blue or Dark Sea Blue as on one hand they are fairly neutral colours that your eyes can kind of gloss over, but on the other they do add a subtle blue tone. While working on the legs, I use some Vallejo German Camouflage Beige World War II to paint the leg wraps. This colour is fantastic because it is a beige with a grey green tone that looks good with a black wash over it. Other beiges can be quite yellow in tone and end up looking sickly with a black wash but this one works well. So we bang a wash of Army Painter Dark Tone over the trousers and leg wraps. Making the legs dark in this manner has two main benefits. Firstly, it saves you a highlighting step. You could call it lazy, but it helps to get your miniatures done that little bit faster. But secondly, it also focuses the viewer's eye onto the brighter and more detailed features higher up on the model, such as the face. Hopefully by this time the speed paint has dried and we can work on the skin further. Using our light grey green we can attack the skin in a couple of ways. We can do a heavy highlight, reapplying the base colour and just leaving the shading in the recesses like you would after a typical wash. Or because the speed paint has left us with a nice dark mid-tone and shade, we can apply the light grey green as a subtle highlight to the higher points of the model like the top of the ears, cheeks and nose. This will give us a much darker skin tone than the previous option. I like to do both to add some variation among the unit. If we chose to reapply the base colour, we will need to apply a highlight to the higher points, and I use Vallejo Pastel Green to do so. You want to be very subtle here and lightly hit the high points such as the top of the cheeks eyebrows and ears. It is very easy to overdo it with this colour, so just hit the very highest points to add definition to the details. Let's finish off the face using Vallejo Off-White. This is used to dot in the whites of the eyes. If you are careful in the last steps, they will be nice and dark already, so no need to apply any further black. And to paint the teeth, which will stand out brilliantly from the black mouth. I move on to the cloth next, and trying to avoid red and black, I pick three different browns. Beastly brown, an orange brown, armour brown, a red brown, 
And beige brown. Hey, uh, beige brown. These are used to paint the various tunics or hoods. By using three different browns here, I can give the orcs a haphazard look, avoiding too much uniformity without having to crack out too many different colours. Once I've got all three colours base coated, they all get a wash of Army Painter's Strong Tone to quickly shade them. When that has dried, reapply the appropriate base colour, leaving the wash in the recesses. As I finish reapplying each colour, I mix in a little Vallejo Iraqi sand and highlight the tunics. Rather than just focus on the high points, I highlight the lower edges in a rough and haphazard fashion. This will further emphasise the cloth's worn and tattered look. The upper portions of the tunic get highlighted in a more traditional way, focusing on the high points of the cloth, though the sleeves also get the tattered treatment. Vallejo chocolate brown is used to base coat all of the leather and wood, in the typical fashion. So we don't need a solid coat, a little thin and patchy will just add to the character. This is followed up with Vallejo flat earth, which is used to weather the leather. We apply this colour in a splotchy manner, focusing mainly on the areas of leather that see wear, such as the toes and sides of the boots, edges of sheaths and bags and such like. Finally, Vallejo dark sand is used to wear the leather further. It's applied sparingly on the areas that see the most wear, where the leather has been worn through any dye or other finishes to the raw leather beneath. So toes, end of knife sheaths and random scratches are good places to start. The wood areas get a rough highlight using beige brown, aiming to both add lines running down the length of the shafts to reflect wood grain and highlight the high points. The Army Painter Strong Tone comes out again and the wood and leather areas are given a generous wash to both shade the areas and tie the various colours together. If the model has hair, I give it a coat of black to clean it up and then highlight with Vallejo Black Grey. To tie in with the box art, I use Vallejo UK PRU Blue to base coat some of the hoods, giving us a nice faded blue. This is given two coats of Army Painter Blue Tone, which deepens the blue in the recesses and changes our mid-tone. To finish that off, I apply a rough highlight of UK PRU Blue to the edges and high points in the same manner as the tunic to emphasise the ragged look of the cloth. Then the model gets a coat of Tamiya Flat Clear to remove any shine and help protect the paint job. With all of the flat areas done, we can work on the metallics. I use Vallejo Steel to weather the steel areas. Much like the cloth, the edges of the steel areas are roughly and unevenly highlighted to give them a chipped, worn look. The sharpened edges of weapons are more deliberately highlighted, as of all the metallic parts, weapon edges would see some care. Citadel Warp Lock Bronze is used to base coat any areas that I want to be bronze. Some of the orcs have breastplates that look suspiciously like skeleton breastplates, so I'll paint these to match. I also paint the maces and some of the helmets and scale armour bronze. I want a variety of ancient and new bronze equipment, so anything ancient is given a messy coat of Citadel Nihalac Oxide. While I wait for that to dry, I use Vallejo Bright Bronze to dry brush any areas of new bronze and pick out the scales of the scale armour. Army Painter's Strong Tone is applied over the Nihilac Oxide to give us the ancient green-brown look, and over all the areas of new bronze to dull down the shine and tarnish the metal a little. Bright Bronze is used to scuff up the ancient bronze as the oxides are worn away through use, 
and I use a rust wash to add some corrosion to the areas of steel. Then we are ready for basing. I baste using my usual method of grout and static grass. Make sure you give the base rim a paint as it tidies up and finishes off the miniature. The last step is to do the shields. I start with a leather brown spray on the back and a black spray on the front. The back is given a wash of strong tone to shade the few details and the metal areas are painted using the same method we used on the orcs. Vallejo Natural Steel Base, then Grim Black Speed Paint. I opt to do a simple quarter design on these shields, roughing out quarters with Vallejo Armor Brown, and then highlighting with Vallejo Dark Flesh Tone, leaving a darker line between the metal details and the black areas. The black areas are then given a highlight of Vallejo Black Grey, once again leaving a dark line between the steel and red areas. The shields are given a spray of Tamiya Flat Clear before being clipped from the frame. The edges are tidied up with a knife to remove any mould lines and the shields are then glued to the figure using super glue. Once firmly attached, I paint the exposed edge black, touch up the metal along the edge with natural steel and then grim black, then add chips and wear with Vallejo steel. Finally, in order to weather the shield faces, I apply a little Vallejo black brown and Iraqi sand with a sponge. And there we go, I reckon they will do the job. Thank you very much for watching, I do hope this video has helped out, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below, and we shall see you next time. Cheers!